And now, because he's got nothing better to do, here's Andy. <laughs> Hi, John. Cheers. Yeah, nothing else, no, nothing better to do. <laughs> nothing better to do, but hang out with us. That's right. Uh, so, yes, where are we? When, why can't I do anything here? When, there you go. Um, welcome, everybody, to the weekly Nianti Shoots group meeting. Today, what are we on? It's the 20th of December. Wow. Merry Christmas, everybody. Um, and it's the last one of 2021. So, yeah, so this is it until... Until... 10th? 10th of January. Yeah, 10th of January. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that sounds dead far away. I suppose, I suppose it is. It is. It's just the way they fall. But yes, yeah, so um, uh, so yes, as always, if anyone's got any queries or questions, ideas or solutions, feel free to uh, raise your hand. We'll get the microphones opened accordingly and we will cover the content. Um, and and, and, I, have a and special, I have a Christmas present for you, Andy. I have the XAML creator. I'm going to drop it in that. Skype. I'm going to let you unzip it, and then I'll walk you through it. How's that sound? Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, cool. After your questions. You must do your questions first. Okay, we don't have any questions. You can have your present. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what I will just say, it's a, trying to see the list. I think most of you there on Friday, probably. Um, we always start with updates. There will be an update... Probably after this, if not by the morning, uh, to the Chilcat wrapper. Uh, it's not got everything we wanted to uh, have in it, but it has got, uh, it's definitely got some new stuff which you can uh, start to make use of. We covered it on Friday, so I'm not going to go through all the intricacies and so on, but just to let you know some of the new things you've got there. We started to build the emails class, and that class is a task. These are task classes. That task class is for all, me, all things email. So receiving, sending, so on and so forth, that kind of thing. So you will, that's got the, uh, that's basically got the start of it. Um, yeah. Yep, so we can see mailbox structures and we should be able to go on to some of these and have a look at the emails and so on and so forth. So we've got the start of the emails class uh, and that will continue. We have got, it's a good, 90, 90% there. Wengel's literally working on it as we speak. Uh, so this is all Wengel's work. Uh, this is the DocuSign class. So we can now, um, again, we, we log in, we can read the documents, uh, read, read the folders. Uh, I think there's one in drafts. Can have a look at what envelopes are in the drafts folder. And then of course you can go off and we should be able to get the, the contents of the particular envelope. She's just working on the documents now. And then we'll put the uh, the insert, change, delete. We'll do it so you can actually uh, maintain those envelopes and that is good to go. So it might not, I might not do a build today only because we're so close to actually finishing that particular function as well. So that's a new documents, uh, DocuSign, I should say, uh, task class. Uh, Google's already there. These, uh, sorry, DTrack was already there, easy post will be coming in the new year. We already use Chillcat for easy post, and but we haven't done the task class, so you will get that. Uh, it's very powerful. I don't know if any, anyone uses easy post, but yeah, it's pretty good if you have to uh, do any kind of parcel collection delivery, that kind of thing. Uh, you have a new weather task class. Um, so, for example, we take a look at Nottingham, I can put UK in there, I should imagine. And it's cloudy. Let's get it in metrics so I know what it is. Four degrees. Yep, I'd say that's about right at the moment. It's rather chilly. 
so yeah, you've got a new weather class, and it, I forgot to mention on Friday, the these are actually provided. These icons are provided via the actual endpoint. So if we were to anyone, can we think of somewhere which is nice and sunny at the moment? I always say Barbados. Let's try Barbados. I right, spelled it right. Barbados. It's not too wrong. Oh, cracky, it's cloudy. Okay, didn't expect that. Um, scattered clouds. Temperatures 27 degrees. Very nice. So you've got a weather class and you've got a currency exchange rate class as well. Uh, it's just supporting one at the moment. If you have other endpoints that you need, then let us know and we can add them accordingly. But they're the current exchange rates for the euro to the pound and the euro to the dollar. I think that's really it. There are some uh, Stripe's not there. Stripe is uh, it's in dev. Pay simple is there. PayPal is in progress. Uh, but you're you're aware of these uh, these others. So yes, that uh, that's the updates. Um, questions? Did I see questions there? Uh, Mark, is it? Oh, oh, Mark, I'll allow you to talk. Where are you, Mark? There you go. Hey, Andy, how you doing? Yes, yeah, good yourself. Hey, good, good. Yeah, and happy holidays to you and your family coming up. So just want to say that right away. But, uh, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I just a couple of things um, on the DocuSign. I'm definitely uh, interested in that. Is that going to be a, a new product or an add-on to the task class? It's a, all of these are new task classes. So, okay. yeah, you just get the update, update your Clarion. The, the example app will be installed and, yeah, that you will have a you will have DocuSign available cool. to you. Yeah, I like that, and I like the the other ones that you've uh, shown as well, the email, um, and that uh, post post one that was I forget. Yeah. Um, There's, and, oh, the emails and uh, the I think the other two couple of new ones in the weather and the currency. Yeah, the weather and the currency. Um, and then I, I posted up an API for your future plans as you're looking at it. It's an AI um, artificial intelligence um, API interface that. I came oh, okay. across. Um, I think I saw that in um, in the Skype chat that uh, Mark might have posted that, or one of the folks uh, did. And I thought it was cool um, um, for the future. But yeah, kind of neat. Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, we're open to all kinds of. Uh... Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we're open to all uh, all types of. Um... Uh, APIs, um, especially if they're popular ones, and we can, you know, we can make use of them. Yeah, this one looks pretty cool because of the, the natural language that you can uh, start using too. I, I, again, I'm not an AI person, but it's definitely what is in the news and on people's minds. So, okay, fine. Um, yeah, cool. We should take a look. Yeah, and then um, and then on the flow graph, I know that uh, we're implementing that. And uh, can do you think that that adding a task class as um, a flow graph um, object button is possible, or is that uh, is that to, to to do what, if you will? You know, if you wanted to. Okay, so let's just use the weather. I just wanted to know what the weather is, and I wanted a button on there, and I just wanted to touch it instead of. You know, it looks like the task class is different than going to a website like weather.com or something, or currency. Press the button, and it's on. My favorites, well, my favorites. I've not tested it, but yes, in theory, it should be able to because one of the things the flow graph can do. Uh, I take it you're, you're, you're thinking of in the, uh, the the shortcuts type interface. Yeah, yeah, the shortcuts interface. You know, and maybe it's something that's in that drop down actions list, which is called task class. I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I just thought of it while you were just showing these other. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't. We don't. We we, we like to keep each pop, uh, product kind of singular, if you will. Now, yeah. there's plenty of integrations where we've done um, uh, report control to uh, report control to chart or calendar to property grid, uh, that kind of thing. So there's lots of ways of getting the uh, products to automatically mm -hmm. work together. Uh, yeah. And we are building on those all the time, especially as this 
the new uh, advent of the emails class, when that is uh, fully released, then you'll see the emails and the SMS or the, or the text messaging be linked directly to the calendar class. So it will automatically do your your your, right. uh, your email reminders and your text reminders, and also your synchronizing from your calendar up to um, Google and so on and so forth. So, so yeah, so that's next for the calendar. Uh, yeah. But um, yeah. one of the things, the, the actions of this, it's a new, we've got a, a new method called Perform Action, and it takes, uh, I think something like 18 actions, 18 types of actions that it can perform. So one of which, and there's, a, there's a few in this example, so run a command, run a, uh, you know, an external command, or um, just try to think, close the window, right. do some other things, open a shortcut, yeah. open a hyperlink, things like that. Yeah. But some of the other things can be execute a procedure. So you could have a local procedure, say, get weather, which made use of the task class and so on and so right. forth. Um, and on the shortcut here, you would just say the action, because you say, give it an action and an action parameter. So the action would be execute a clarion procedure, and the procedure would be the name of your procedure compiled into your code, and it will execute the, the line of code within your application. Because it does it via binding your local procedure, so that you can uh, execute the, the execute the procedure via via the binding. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, that sounds uh, like. So the, to answer your question, yes, you should be able to do it now. Technically. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, and one thing I've been working with uh, this, just polishing a few things off because I know that we're going to work uh, on some things together. But uh, I did uh, get I did get uh, the blob to now. Um, be associated um, as the image for representing the um, the icon, like the Amazon and the BBC and the calculator. I have a blob file or a blob association to each record, so <clears throat> I can yet. Uh, so, so I'm looking at, at that being the direction where you can carry that with. It doesn't have to be a folder that's going to be filled with all these images. Um, and then I was going to. Think about doing a drag and drop to the blob so people could then just drag and drop an image to that blob and then it becomes the icon or the um uh, to represent whether it's you know ebay or youtube or whatever yeah. so, the, the, yeah. the the shortcut uh that's that's fine but currently um the shortcut bar sorry the, the shortcut the the, uh, the flow graph um doesn't allow you to load the image from memory. It will require it to be an external file. So you'll have to write write the blob out to a file so that you can associate it. Yeah, it does. It is actually in a file. Oh, no, but I meant an actual external file, like uh, oh, not, a blob, not in the blob. Oh, no, hmm. no. All right. No, I mean, we can look at that, but we, yeah, we, we it's not a, a present. You can't do that. So it's going it. to load it from an external image file. So mm -hmm. facebook.png, ebay.png, things like that. Okay. All right. Well, I, I just added as a, as a small thing, it doesn't have to be the direction. Um, I'm still going with what are the least, the path of least friction and resistance to, <clears throat> excuse me, just get the UI uh, in face to my app. So, <clears throat> okay. Yep. That's fine. And, uh, I'll, I'll fire you an email after the after the webinar, but uh, I was going to look at tomorrow or Wednesday uh, to take a, uh, a look at your the RDP. But I'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk offline on that. All right, thanks a lot. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, okay. Okay. Um, any other questions so far? Did you do Did you do Kevin's? Kevin's. I yeah, see. Um, you cannot see it. No. No. Says so no other questions for me. That's so uh, weird. <laughs> says answered. Got Matt, three answers from Mark. DocuSign, the API link, and um, can oh. add a task class to the flow graph. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in Skype for you. Oh, I'm going. It's just appeared. Oh, he he posted it again because he posted. Oh, okay. It again. Sorry, Kevin. Not ignoring you. I um, didn't didn't get it. Um, well, I was wondering if you. Hang on. Let's just open the mic. That's much, much, much easier. Here you go, Kevin. Have you got a microphone? If not, then I'm, I can. I'm going to take this as personal, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll take it up with Zoom. I posted the question before you actually began. As soon as your logo started playing the music, it's when I posted the message. 
Oh no, no, I didn't get uh, I didn't get anything. No, sorry. Um, so my question but, is to, to let people know. I'm I'm just curious if we could get some uh, your thoughts and ideas of where you hope to support any screen with your products, which products, and a timeline if all things go well. Okay. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. Okay. So any any Our big one is calendar. We re we really depend on your calendar. You can. Okay. Well. That pedal just one time mode, by the way. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, in, in full web mode, so to speak, that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. So any any controls that are non-UI, so that's not the calendar at the moment. So any controls that are non-UI, e.g. Uh, the task ones, which we just saw a second ago. So they perform communications, that kind of thing. They will work with any screen. H, uh, the, the old Clarion 11 H5 and uh, NetTalk web servers. They will work now straight out of the box, which is good. And we have customers actually using them, not in any screen, but in the uh, Clarion H5 and in Bruce's NetTalk web server. And they use our chill cap with those. Um, to One of them is going off doing QuickBooks. One of them is doing the pay simple uh, payment gateway. So, so, that, so that's done. So from a server point of view, no problem whatsoever. We're, we're good to go now out of the box. Um, anything that is UI uh, and especially local, then of course it's not. And um, what we mean here is the, you know, the, the, the any screen. And, and, as, and I suppose the other two actually for that matter. Um, and the answer is no at the moment. Um, plans, definitely, we have some. <laughs> now we are, we, we are waiting for Marco. We are waiting for Soft Velocity. I believe it's 1.3, uh, where they are opening up uh, Java client-side uh, content that we, which we can set rather than them they take control of. They're going to allow us to do some. Uh, now, interestingly, the very first, what I've tried to do is think of uh, HTML replacements and Java and you know, JS, uh, basically it, it, replacements for the code job controls. And if all goes to plan, not sure how far we'll get down this road. What we want to do is have it so you, except for setting a, you know, like a new new setting on the, uh, probably on the global template, it'll detect if you're in any screen, a code job mode, desktop mode, and the template and the class which you're used to using will launch the code job control, and you will carry on on the desktop mode as you are now. If you're in any screen mode, then what we want to do is still use the template and all the settings and the embed points, but um, paint uh, basically a, a web control instead of the code job control and have you uh, interface, have the, the end user interface with that, uh, like the calendar, good example, <clears throat> feed that back into the class so you carry on using your code in the exact same embed points. That's our ideal scenario. And we're gonna see how, if we can get, how far we can get towards that. Uh, we started to look for equivalent controls. I found a whole suite and I purchased a license to it uh, many moons ago, actually, way before any screen was launched. It was more to plug into uh, Bruce's stuff. Um, but I uh, purchased, uh, purchased a suite, it's got everything. It's got the calendar, it's, got, it's even got docking panes, command bars, task panels, everything. And it was, a, it was it was reasonably priced, and then since then the price has gone crazy. So I don't think I'm going to put time and effort into that because I don't think users will pay the price for the actual web controls. You know, it went into yeah. it went into the thousands um, for for each individual license. So you know, I, I did a we've got a, a a wrapper which I did a long time ago for Word using the uh, Office Viewer Control. And at the time, it was a very reasonably priced product. And it's brilliant to give you word, embed Word or Excel straight into your uh, desktop application. It was the, the best on the market. And then I think they become they, they got to know that they were the best on the market and they put the pricing through the roof. Uh, it went from a few hundred dollars or two or three hundred dollars up to so many thousand dollars per, per user. People are just not going to pay it, not to embed, you know, uh, certain stuff. So, so what we try to do is we've tried to find free, <laughs> and that's always good, or very reasonably priced alternative controls. But the good news is that the calendar we've already found the free replacement, um, which is which is really nice. So, so we will be going with that. I think it's cause. 
I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can find it. But basically, yeah, we've got a calendar. So but we do need to wait for uh, soft velocity. Our hands are literally tied. It's not, not through want of trying it. It's just until they change their product to allow us to do it, we can't do anything. We're, our hands are literally tied. I know there's a lot of talk, and I do monitor the uh, the news groups. And they have, you know, maybe yeah, I was the one that brought it up recently. Yeah, no, no, I've, I've seen on there, and they have announced on uh, uh, on a couple of the other chats in the past that we did, that what our intentions are because we have been quiet to people probably think we're not interested. We are, but uh, but until the client uh, Java, uh, uh, until the client side is, is opened up to us, then we can't do a bean. So, so it's do you always, think it's you, a part of your tools would have a, 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 an RTF a replacement also? Hmm. Rich text format replacement? Yeah, oh yeah. We don't currently, we don't currently have a, um, an RTF, but if there's a market there, and I dare say there probably would be, well, then I would look yeah, at I mean, if, if you can figure out how to do the whole JavaScript calendar, I would think if you had a plug-in for rich text format that'd be a, a small market because whoever's doing any screen but right now it doesn't sound like they're going to support rich text format in html5 so somebody has to step up and do it i'll take a look i've got no no problem with that i'll probably prove the uh, uh prove the theory that i've got or the implementation plan i've got with the calendar first which will be more which will be more work but uh, we've got the full support of the class and the templates and everything behind the calendar. So right. I'll, prob I'll probably uh, I'll probably go with that first. Plus, let me see if I can find the actual calendar and show you the idea. Um, I've got it bookmarked, but I'll see if I can find it anyway. Need to add. Uh, Be a second. Okay, I think that's the one. Full calendar we were looking at, and they have uh, various different pricing starting at zero. Um, and we have a look at demo of this and. Yeah, you know, from a cold shop point of view, that's pretty sim very similar. You can switch your theme to day, day view. Very nice. So so that's our intention. If we can, you know, bring this, we should be able to. Remember, I'm sure I've changed the color of this one on one of them. Because what I did. Hmm. But, uh, but yes, basically that, that, that is our intention uh, to be able to take our settings uh, write the client side uh, uh, JS code for this. Uh, so the user gets this where you would expect to see the calendar on your normal window, the cold job control calendar. The user gets this instead. They interact as they do now. And more importantly, um, you, you're, the, the, it talks back to the class as it does now. Um, so, so your code is as it was. Now, of course, we being web, we've got to, there'll, be, there'll definitely be a few other things for me to think of and so on and so forth. But um, that's kind of, in an ideal world, that will be the, uh, that's the, the approach we're taking. Okay. Do you have the, what's the, can you read the URL for that? So I can at least tell my client, this is what we hope to support. Yeah, yeah, fullcalendar.io. And if you do fullcalendar.io slash demos, then you literally, this is a demo we're looking at. Okay, perfect. And as I say, if we look at the pricing, there you've got a standard is free. Right. So I dare say people will like that. <laughs> so you won't get a timeline view. That's fine. You don't need it. Uh, well, I never got reports timeline to review in our product so to work properly. So we put that on hold. Yeah, now if you're going to use a timeline, don't use it. Uh, this is uh, the timeline of the calendar for me is a bit non-starter. If you want to do a timeline, take the calendar data um, mm -hmm. and put it into a report control in track view. 
uh, and there's a there's a command which will do find events. So you can find the events uh, which what are currently loaded into the calendar, all in memory. So you're not having to do data. Oh yeah, I want to say report control. That's what yeah. we're using. We just never got it to work cleanly enough, so we quit working on it. Oh well, that's that's how we do them, and and they and they go straight into report control as, as uh, blocks on the time view. Uh, on the sorry on the track view, and then you can actually have the track view interacting with the calendar, so they can move things around. Uh, I can demonstrate that in the new year if you like. Okay, yeah, I mean it was when you were trying to we were trying to deal with all the collisions of appointments and things like that, and we got sidetracked and never got back to it. So. Okay. 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 But yeah, so so basically, to answer, you, and now you say about timeline, I I'll make this promise now. Once uh, fingers aren't to cross, I'm not. <laughs> um, um, once the uh, next any screen is released, which gives us act uh, ac you know uh, ac uh, access to uh, doing our own code, client code, uh, then I will pencil in within probably a two week period that we will take a look to see if we can step what, what's involved in this. I can't say what's involved until I know what their, their implementation, but I'll, I'll, I'll say now within two weeks, I'll start work on, on, on getting the two linked together and I'm starting with the calendar. It's always been the calendar that's been the first one. Okay, cool, thank you. Okie dokie. So, uh, John, I'm still watching what? for questions. Yes. And if anybody else has any questions, then feel free to, uh, you know, raise your hand. Uh, John, I was wondering. Uh, okay. Oh, that's a question from uh, from Kevin. Kevin. Right. Okay. Yeah, I put it in there for you. All right. So you want you want your Christmas present? You want to open it early? Let's take a do. look. Let's take a look. While you're doing that, so I'm going to uh, open up the markup. So this, for those who are not sure, this is something we kind of did under um, at speed last week. And then John's basically, I've not done anything else on it since, and, and John's been busy doing this. So let's take a look. Everything's there. The app is there, the dictionary solution, the EXE. It should just run. OK. Uh, and, th and then I'll walk you through it. I'm not going to put it under our examples because it's not our example, it's yours. So, um, <laughs> so, so, so uh, let's put it under here. And what, what is it? Ultimate uh, XML? XAML, yeah. XAML, it's not XML. It's XAML. Oh, yeah, yeah. XAML. <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a long day. <laughs> Need more caffeine in these, I open. I'm on decaf. <laughs> Okay, we're lucky I, I gave you. Just run it. Okay. There you go. All right, so let's start with the upper left where it says canvas. Mm -hmm. So let's let's pick a color for your canvas. So there's the button to, um, yeah, there you go. Just pick any color. And then I guess you have to click off. I'm not sure why you have to um, do that. There you go. Why is it not showing me the canvas? Do you have the sample? Did, did, did I give you the markup? I must have. Markup control 20.1. It's there. OK. OK. Why is it not um, showing up? OK. Have we got a manifest for the application itself? We have. Yeah. No, we haven't. That's for the code joke. It, they're not called code joke. They're normally extreme. Are we missing oh, sorry, the no, manifest? They're... No, okay, that's the controls. I thought I gave them all over there. Oh, it must have. Only. Yep. There they oh, are. Yeah, well. Ultimate SAML is calling 20.1 property grid, report control, and markup. Okay, so what are we missing? We've got a suite controls. Side? Are we expecting a suite controls as well? Because I didn't see that. No, you, no, they're not. they're not used. Yeah, it's working on my end, so something's wrong on your end. Well, I'll tell you or what, I've something's got, different. I haven't got 20 regis, 20.1 registered, but I can do if uh, that helps. I guess. Why don't you? Maybe the, maybe the reg free isn't working. Can't see it, to be fair. It kind of looked OK. Yeah. 
Oh wait, what's showing? It's working. It's working. You got text block sample text there, so it's working. It's okay. Okay. There you go. Okay. All right, now it's working at least. So yeah, you can pick any color. So this, uh, if you're familiar with XAML, I guess you are. For those who aren't, um, you have a canvas. I've got it set up so you have canvas, stack panel, and then text blocks to make these things. So if you look at the generated XAML in the bottom right corner. Okay. There, yeah. Okay, so that's that's all your generated stuff. So that's what you would copy into Clarion and then use it in any of the controls. So you've got a copy to clipboard button right above there. And if you copy, go ahead and click that. Okay, and just paste it underneath the generated XAML just so you can see what it looks like. There you go. See, so it Clarionizes it for you automatically. So it's, oh. it's ready to paste. Nice, okay. So it's ready to go. So I made that kind of easy. And that's nice that this, uh, I'm just seeing from here that you're painting whatever's there. So technically, mm -hmm. if you was just wanting to fine tune this a little, you could actually just fine tune there rather than here. You can. Um, like, see where it says text block sample text? Just change the text there in the, in the generated. And it should update it above. Yeah, see it automatically updates. Nice. Whatever you but do. But here's, here's the test for us. So there's a test. So background is that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I want to change it back to what I had. It no, has... it doesn't update that. It doesn't read. It does ah. not read the generated XAML and update the property grid. Oh, it would be. It nice. doesn't do that. Oh, it would be nice, wouldn't it? Maybe uh, you could do that. Because you have the source code now, so. <laughs> okay, okay, fair enough. You can do that. Just another few things before we move further. Um, that's your text blocks, block sample text that you're hovering over. So yep. that's where you could change the text above and it would, you know, do whatever. If you go down below there, there's your content. Um, yeah, there you go. Cool. That's neat. If you check or uncheck those, then you'll turn on and off the canvas or the stack panel, and it updates it in the right on the right-hand side. So if you just wanted to do a single line and not have a canvas or a stack panel, you can do that. Test plot one. Do we have multiple test plots? You can. I'll show you how you want to do that. Oh, okay. You you highlight it. Highlight the like test text two, and then click the load button. And then any changes you make are to, see now you've got two lines in the right side there. Okay. And any changes you make, if you go to the text block tab at the top uh, right, top left, sorry. There you go. Okay, those are all the parameters you can change in the text block. And at the bottom, I've got some preloaded things that I've just been playing with at the very bottom. So there's headline, if you click load, then it should load in a whole bunch of stuff that I've been playing with just to see that they're different. Got and you. you did okay. that. Okay, and so and now if you go there, you go. So go to go to headline and click load. Go de back down to the bottom, and click load. Now go over to the right and um, where it says text block sample text in the content. In, in go down oh, further. In the content. To, yep. to the bottom, 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 bottom. And then go all the way down to the bottom. And the, where it says canvas stack panel text block. Oh, sample sorry. Yeah. Text. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Click on two. And load that. Click on the load button right above it. Okay, now see right above where your cursor is, it says text block sample text two, so you know which one you're working with. That's the yep. heading up there. Okay, so now if you go to subhead and load that on the left and click load, see now you've got two different okay. definitions, I guess, that you're playing with there. So whichever one that you've loaded is what the property grid will affect. See. So right now you've got loaded sample text too. So if you went over to the property grid and just changed the size of the font or changed the size of or the color or margins or anything like that, then that's the one that's going to affect is the one on the bottom. Okay. And we'll go to that one. Well, it's not what's highlighted. It's what's loaded. Oh, yes, highlight. of course. Sorry. Yes, of course. Right. So what's loaded right now is text two, line two. If you want to do line okay. one, click on one, and then click load. So how do you get more text here, then? 
textbooks. You don't. I actually have five of them defined, but I only put two in so far. I just, I mean, I could probably make it so you could add more. Um, could not, could but I, could I've just be. said it at, I've just said it at that five, although you're not seeing three of them. Could not text box be a report control? And then you can put any number in there. It is a report control, and you could, but I'd have to rework the underlying code. I was, I just wanted to get it to work. So oh that no, I no, it's make, good. No, no, I, I was just thinking because. Oh yeah, you can expand you, it. You can sure. have text block and text block. You know, they can be quite heavily. Uh, oh yeah, text, yeah, you can get a bunch of them. Based. I guess what what I wanted to do was just my my purpose really is to make simple things. I mean, I don't support mm -hmm. grids and and there's all sorts of things it doesn't do, but it gets you a, a start mm. on if I want to do multi-line text in a report control. This will let me do multi-line text in a report control. Yeah, which is my one of my primary which is goals. What we use, as I say, in the in the betting system, in the horse racing, where we needed to split one cell, if you will, so like one of this into four. So basically, that was actually showing four pieces of information, four sets of figures, as it was, uh, right. for our requirement, but in a very small uh, cell because you. you the number of runners is, is very important in a race uh, for the for the bookmaker to to see. They want to see all the runners because they can see what their exposure is. So we had to make what just one of the cells, uh, cut it into four and make it very small. But it still worked. It, it, it was good. It works. It works out on the race course, and that's the main thing. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing this doesn't do is a grid. That that seems pretty complicated, but. I don't know if I see a need for it. It's not that hard to hand code a grid, you know, if you need to do that. Well, but at least visually, I, I can look and I can do the colors and I can do all the, you know, the margins and all that kind of stuff, just kind of visually. And anything you change in the property grid shows up immediately on the, in the preview. Yeah, no, nice, very nice. So I merge some of this across. Yep, there's your size going across. I see you. I'll bring it across that way. Yeah, and it, it goes up to 100, and I don't know, maybe it should go further. Um, I don't know. We'll see what feedback is, I guess. Once we get it out there. Well, the other, I was going to look at. Oh, alignment. That alignment drops down, too. I wanted to have alignment be able to drop down or be automatically dropped down. Uh, see it on the bottom of the property grid there? Keep oh, going down. Yes. There you go. Yep. Yeah, there you go. See, so you can align it different ways as well. No, I'm not seeing that change. There's nothing to do. Well, go go to your stack panel and make it bigger because it's the stack panel is just not even defined. So wow. make your height. I would um, change cool. the color of the stack panel because it's hard to see where it actually is. Okay, so that's your stack panel. So you could change the size there. That one I made like 4,000. So it's a little touchier than the other ones because it needed a little bit more. Uh, flexibility okay so now if you go to the alignment it should should align I think oh, might have changed it. yeah yeah okay yeah there you go see because it's within that step within panel. the step panel yep and you can make it go to the middle well maybe not you might have to change you might have to set the size of the canvas to make it go to the middle Uh, that's pretty big. Yeah, maybe not. I feel like I had the top, the middle stuff working, but I can't remember how I did it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. Yeah, very good. You'd definitely be busy. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I know. Safe I'd... style. Okay, so if you if you like this style that you've done here. Whatever you've got highlighted at the bottom where it says style definitions, that'll save it to that style. So you can add a new one if you wanted to and then save it so you can recall these these different styles. Oh, yeah. Okay. Nice. So what would I, I, I wouldn't go down this path, but I was going to create a, a painter. But what I was going to give you is where's the sample? Stream markup, okay. 
uh, you've got the markup context, but they add various different. Um... I can't see for looking here now. Just one second. Nothing's no child. Markup hyperlink? No, it weren't this. Somewhere there was a load of predefined. Ah, yeah. Radio buttons, polyline, polygon, rectangle, um, rooted event. I, oh, I need to talk about it. But basically, some of these shapes. And I was going to um, uh, get, get some of these for you. So you basically um, you can do a painter. I'm trying to think. Just let me quickly look if Cold Jock do have a XAML demo. They have some kind of XAML utility. But I didn't look at it too closely. I didn't look at it at all. Okay, let's download it. Let's take a look. Anyway, I was pretty happy with this just because I could oh, no, see you, stuff you, and then get it uh, get it moving straight uh, into the. It, I can I can make use of it straight away in that definitely. Yeah, um, but of course you know you're going to get somebody who oh, I want a full full on painter that kind of. Thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is really just you know. So this is a, it's just to get you going. Yeah, all it is. It's got to be a starting point. But if I can throw some extra tools in there for you. Um, uh, which you can easily add to yours, and that could also come in pretty handy. So, what's baseline? You got some. Now, these are just taking some basic examples that they've just sent out. Okay, so that's that's not really a painter like, like yours is going to be. This is just there's the raw XAML, and this is the visual representation of it. Now, you should be able to take that XAML at the bottom and paste it into the into my program. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In the previewer, and it should show, I would guess, since it's their stuff, Let's right? Take a look. I'll have that yeah, there. Depending on if my if I made the, the big, big, big enough. enough. Yeah. Oh, it looks there like it. There. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that neat? <laughs> That's just really cool. And then you could. Um, I don't know what you, I don't. I don't think anything works now <laughs> because it doesn't know anything. What's going on? Oh, um, yeah, it could be. <laughs> You know, so, my, the property grid is useless at this point. That's well, pretty that, neat, that's though. That's why I was asking. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, there was one. But the trick oh, part now is that if you click on that link, you know, we got to be able to get the events. Yep. Yep, that's all it was. This wasn't what I was actually looking for, I'll be honest. This is all they're doing is literally just loading all. That's, that sounds uh, a bit poor, uh, a bit bad. They, they're showing various different XAML examples. Beautiful, mm -hmm. very, very, you know, very, very good. But it's not that. I thought there was one. Um, it must be in the Flow Graph Painter. Just let me have a look. And it must be in their Flow Graph Painter. One more second. You know when you've seen something and you yeah. they can't find can't find it. Well, what I prepared earlier, because we've had that in the past. Nope, that's mine. Here, Andy, check. I just put a link in um, Skype for you. Okay. This is what uh, I came across. I think it was this that I was thinking. That if we can have some predefined sample stuff, so you can yeah. paste it onto 
the 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 the, the canvas uh, and get the the the, the thermal from that at the same time. And I know that they have no, not them. So we can drop a flag on there, that kind of thing. Maybe this is something so that might be a bit OTT, but that was the idea. You see that is XAML, what we've just mm. posted on here. Now that's that that's a XAML uh, node on the flow graph. Anyway, that's it. Uh, just uh, getting uh, getting beyond ourselves here, but you get the idea. Mm -hmm. um, so, what's, what am I looking for here, John? Oh, I just I just uh, found oh, the markup. something from Kojak on markup. Yeah, but it wasn't. I don't think it's anything helpful, actually. I think it was one of these. I think I've seen that. Oh, and then it was animated. That'd be interesting. Uh, impressive to see in yours. Yeah, and it should that. and it should work as long as the, you know the, uh, the the buffer's big enough. Uh, ah no, not. it's wanting. Uh, oh, yeah, what's the gifs? It's it the gifs. GIFs. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's that's uh, that's cheating because the whole point of this is so you don't uh, don't have to do that. But for those who are interested, this is adding the whole UI level totally abstract from the data and the business intelligence and this is just just your, your UI level that's quite uh, quite good yep so there's your present Andy so so my yeah. present is is for you to try to get it to to recognize an event to, now yeah so something along <laughs> the lines of let's just grab Something that's got a, a link or something. Oh, okay. That's as good as any. Let's Something's get got a button. There you go. It's got buttons, right? Okay. So basically, we want to know where within the, uh, within Clarion when you've interacted with these. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, joy. Okay. It all starts with... Uh, it's a markup label, but do we get the callback events? So far, we've only got a recreated. So it's how I'm going to be able to trap the events. As long as I can get the events, then the answer is I should give it a go. Uh, and, you know, that's how it all works. But I'll follow it through. I shall uh, call upon them if required as well. But yes, cool, John. So is it clear? Can I just like uh, start fresh? Um, yeah, you, you go over to the generated XAML and press Control A, and then no, there's no clear. There's okay. no clear. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that worked. I was just looking for the fault. Well, I'll, I'll just play again. So you can. I mean, you can um, press Control A and and get oh, yeah. or, yeah, or, or just say. load it. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna have the settings in there. Yeah. So. Right. Any, anytime you change a setting, it'll re repaint it with this so default. I, I suppose so, yeah. it would have been that. Yeah, could have so, done yeah. that too. Yep. No, cool, cool. So, so. Oh, I have a question is... for you. I have a question while you're looking at that. See the property grid at the bottom. The bottom line is is border is gone, on the property grid. It's on every one of them. The the bottom is is not there. What's underneath it? Just, is it not? Has it not resized? No, there's no resizing at all in this in this uh, application. So nothing gets resized. It's just that the bottom is gone. I've noticed that on recently for some. I don't know why. I don't know if it's, if it's the version of the property grid or what exactly is going on. But I'm not. Uh, what it's the... gone. It's a brand new app, ABC app, Clarion Love. Um. Okay. Just one second, we're too many icons here. We do a property grid. I think it's using either 20.1 or 20.2. Uh, point one. Uh, no, I'm thinking of this, uh, the app. Oh, I see, yeah. OK, 
Okay, no, form is form is there. Uh, sorry, the line's there, as I expect. Ah, is that the verbs? You're getting that effect. Could be. Is it, it looks like it's... I turn, I I've turn got, mine off, though. I'm going mean, to say, I've got, mine, off. I've got mine turned off. So you could yeah. argue that the, the verbs shouldn't be selectable. I think it's the verbs. So if I make that smaller, oh, I've got it as a minimum size. But if I make that there, then that's the effect you're getting. I think it's the yeah. verbs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go figure. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at that. Because if they're turned off, then they should be, you shouldn't be able to resize. Oh, I see. I understand. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, shouldn't. I shouldn't get this uh, this thing at all, uh, at all. Verbs for people who are not sure. Again, what we're what we're talking about is we've all seen the property grid. We've used them in as long as you're on at least clarion seven. Uh, it's these. Basically, you've got to like a little help, and these are the verbs. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I so always turn mine off. Uh, yeah, yeah I, to be honest, I do. I so, um, but I, I do believe that's turned off, so that shouldn't be selectable. I shouldn't be able to get to it in the first place. I wonder if that's a, a twenty, a version twenty onwards that they've maybe upset that. I shall take a look. Could be. It seems like a new thing that I noticed. So, mm, I'd have, I'd have definitely noticed that in the past. If I go to our master. What's our master use? Examples, property grid, 20.1, oh, chances are it's going to be very similar to yours then. Yeah, there's the verbs, there's the help. Do I have any without them turned on? Chances are, oh, that's got no help on it, that's good. Hmm, okay, leave that with me done, I'll... I'll see about turning that off. But yes, that, they're verbs for, for the other attendees who are watching. Cool. Well, thank you very much, John. Uh, oh, not that. Now, if you toys. load the app and we try to like compile toys. it, yeah, we do like toys. <laughs> I was trying to think if there was anything else fun that I put into this thing, but I think we've covered all the all the buttons. What's, it's, that, what's it in? C10 or C11? Yeah, yeah. Which one? C... It's, it's 11. Clarion 11, but it, not 11.1. 11. 11. Uh, do I need it's compiled a, in 11. Do I need a template? I think you have all the templates. What you'll be missing is the icons. Let's take a look. Um... It, should, it should load for you. You've got String Theory is the only other one that I used that was... Not yours, I think. Uh, I use the eleven point one IDE, but the I compile an eleven. Template changes. Oh, markup. Yeah, it's, uh, it wouldn't know what it is. Oh, you don't have it. I've, I have I have it in 10. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, no problem. I, no I had problem. a request too. If, if, since you're going to load it up, I do have a, an embed request. Okay, okay.
oh yeah, I don't like it. You've just been in the template register and we've closed that. Okay. So All right, there you go. You'll compile. I don't think you're gonna have icon. You're gonna be missing icons. I didn't. I didn't include the icons. You can just remove them. There's only a few of them. Four. Uh, oh no! Wait. Double. What's that looking for? Oh, that's my class. You're missing my class. I didn't include that. Let me. Uh, I'll move it over. I'll give it to you. Hold on, hold on. Uh, if I can find it. Okay, it's in your Skype. Okay. I forgot yeah. about that. So we want these uh, just in... You can just put them in the same folder, right? It would find them. on second. I don't want to put them in there because if I do a clean up, it will remove them. So it won't be a second. Do I not have it on this? Don't have it in there. Okay. Uh, okay. No problem. I'll put them in the uh, in the base one to start with. I had the weirdest thing happen where I was working along and I was redesigning the window and then I went to click on one of the controls on actions and nothing happened. Just absolutely nothing. Okay. Yeah, and it was for every single control. Clarion control, didn't matter. Actions were, were, it was gone and I had to go back like six or seven saves before I finally got to one that would work. It was just Oh, nice. so it was the app. I was going to say it weren't just so the dialogue app. window no, so, was off no. the screen. No, uh, I quit Clarion, I loaded Clarion, I did all sorts of things, but it was just something happened. Okay, okay. What's it looking for? Um, Quite a few of these, so I think it's this group. Well, that's that's from the um, class. Maybe that's the wrong one. <laughs> I think I gave you the wrong class. Hold on. I have, uh, I think I did. I know I did. My mistake. Yep, I gave you the wrong one, Andy, sorry. Okay, okay. There you go, those are, those are the right ones. I have different versions, you know, for older apps that I don't want to change. And I gave the older one. Okay, here we go again. <laughs> here we go. Okay, okay. Um, ODBC32 lib. So 
I'm missing that for some reason. And then there's the icons that we're missing. I wonder why the ODBC, what are you, what are you linking in? Uh, I don't know why it's looking for that. I have Ultimate ODBC. SQL in there, and it's probably linking it in uh, from yeah. the Ultimate SQL. So I can give you that. Please. <laughs> what do you want to do about the icons? You want, you want me to... Yeah, I just want to zip them, make it easier. Rather than me keep copying, you know, one for one. I can do that. Um, you might have them. I don't know. They're actually all the stuff. You probably have most of their stuff, I would guess. Or a lot yeah. of it. Okay, ODBC. Where did I put it? Um... Okay, here's your ODBC. And let me grab your icons. How many are there? Eight? Eight, yep. Okay, hold on. Um, do you want to read them to me? And I'll select them. Oh, okay, yep. So transition dash merge the icon. Hold on. Transition what? Okay. It's not in this folder. That's a weird <laughs> one. All right. Well, I'll find it. Um, let's do the next one. Create dash new the icon. Oh, hyphen, I know why. I know why. Found it. Okay, next. Which one? Did you find transition or create? I found create dot new. I'm just going to copy okay. over as I find them. So data import data, data dash import, and then you want. Okay, don't have that one. It, that's in a different folder that I'm in. So let's get all okay. the ones that are in this folder. Button remove. Button dash remove. Got it. Button dash on dash off. Got it. Button dash add. Button dash add. Database Got dash it. save. But that's in the other folder. Yeah, that's in the other folder. And clipboard dash copy dash text. Okay, got it. Now let me go to the other folder. Database. Icons. Okay, so what's the first one was transition merge. Transition dash merge. Okay, that's a hard one to find. I'll I'll have to do a. I can I'll Google. find it. I'll find it. Okay, what's the next data import? So, yeah. Uh, yes, I think you also. And then database save. Database save, yeah. This must just be enthralling for everybody who's here. <laughs> okay, so there this, you go. Actually, for people who are here, this for me is a lesson in how not to set up 
your images for your applications. I'm going to give a tip in a second on how I approach it. I'm not saying it's right, but it is easier than this. See, I'm, a, I'm an example of how not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so you save. Um, so what does that give us? That gives us seven. So is that just that transition? Should I just copy one? Uh, yeah, sure. Let's copy one over. I'm not exactly sure where that one is. Right, okay. That's right. Yep, you got it. No docking panes in there? No, 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 no. No docking panes, no resizing. You, you got to have something to do, Andy. Let me uh, let me get my hands on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. You said about an embed point. I do. I have an embed point I would like you to do. So uh, go ahead and close that off and let's go to the source code. Right click and Oops. Yeah. Embedder source. Uh, do a search for if one equals one. Yeah. There you go. Okay. I had to I had to fudge this because this is at the end of a case statement. And see, so it's of name of this, of this, of this. After every one of those, I need to do show XAML. So I could put show XAML in after every one of those things, or I could put it after the end. So I need an embed right after 6533. I guess that's where I would need it. Before the return, between 6533 and 6534 is where I need it. On, on the property grid. Yeah, you see, couldn't you put it after in here quite late on? Something like. Try it. As before. Okay. Do 10,000. No, it's still before. Hmm. Okay, I've got you. Yep. No and does that does that does that make sense to you? Because it's it's just... it does. You want it. You want to do it outside of that. So but, I want, but it's I still want within something. The right, because it's something that every one of those has to do. Maybe that's an unusual thing, but no, no, no. That makes sense. What I might do is change the generation place of this, so you have got an embed before and after it. Yeah. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, that's doable. Yeah, and then if like if I add a an item to the property grid, then it breaks the code because you know the little yeah the, ends the, and the stuff all, are in the, the wrong place. Stuff. Yeah, they go up and then it's it's bad. Yeah. But that yeah, that'd be cool. That would that would fix that problem. Other than that, don't don't criticize my code. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it on the weekend and I did it quickly. So you did it extremely yeah. quickly. I did. So, yeah. No, I was no, up no, till no. six thirty last night. Six thirty, <laughs> working on it. Six thirty. <laughs> See, in the in twenty years ago, I would have been up till midnight. But no, I was up <laughs> till six thirty working on it. So, a tip for, and I'm not saying this is uh, the right way or a wrong way. It's just a tip. Okay, so nobody shoot me and say I'm preaching. Um, so images. Okay, you. I have my Clarion set up, my Clarions set up, lots of, and all the C10s are under here with their sub 
uh, projects if they need to be in my 11s are under there with my so on and so forth but uh, under my clarion which remember this is all on a sync as well but that's totally irrelevant i have an images and i have default images i have a particular project when i, when I was there i have other projects i have no anti so, so i have other projects uh, you know, basically other particular setups if you will and then I like to know what's where, so I know the icons are in there and so on. So let's just go with that to start with. So the Noyantis one and the defaults of Noyantis. As well as that, under a particular project, so if I go to, let's say, Tarando's application, we can also have an images under here. So basically, I can have a default, which will be for all of my projects. So insert, change, delete, cut, copy, paste, things like that. Put them all in the default so I know that every one of my projects all get them from the default place. And then if I need to override it per application, I can do in a subfolder of the actual project itself. So the subject the subfolder gets pro uh, backed up with the actual project. And then in the redirects, I very simply just have let's go to some of the images we'll go with icons but you see where we're going it will go to the current it will go to the subfolder images it will look in there it will look at my now yeah okay we'll look at that particular uh, project it will look in there and ultimately it will go to default at the end interesting that's the wrong redirect for that clarion 11 he's picked up yeah but but yes basically let me go back to a clarion let me go to Tarandall setup that would be better but did that make sense yep i totally understand it the reason i i didn't do it is because i did it on the weekend and i worked till 6 30 andy <sighs> Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm saying your clarion setup. That's nothing to do with your project. I'm saying your clarion setup. Uh, and then when I you see. start a new project, you could go down that same route. You don't, It's done automatically for you. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, I guess I've got all my icons in one spot. And then I go pick it out. But then I have to copy it over to that, that other folder. So it, it's extra steps. No, no, no. You only, you only, you would ever really put them into the subfolder of the project if you was overriding one of the ones. And you should, you should really have the icons of that particular project with the project. Because if you was to right, so you have to restore copy your hard drive and so on and so forth. You see, you do have to copy them uh, if they're not part of your standard, like the cut, copy and paste, uh, close. You know, you, your everyday ones. They're going to be common. For the, all of your products, if you will, but if you have some specific just for your POS application, I've got some specific for Tarando, I've got some specific for the betting system, for Displomo, things like that. So they can go in the subfolder of just those particular projects. Yes, and I I actually agree with you, and I've done that in the past. Cool. Oh, Oakley, Oakley, right. Any you want me to show you, you my to... tip? You want me to show you my yeah, tip? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll just paste it over for you. That's what I'll do. Hold on. Um, let's see if I can... Oops, what was that there? I'll show you my redirection file. I, I wish I understood redirection files better. I feel like we need a whole webinar on redirection files. Because I don't understand all the things that it can do. But. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I could just share my screen, but I don't want to. I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Whoa. Okay, hold on. I want to find what I want to find. Yeah, this will work. Okay, so just just pop that in a text editor or something. This is my tip for redirection files. Oh, 
Okay. See how nice and neat that looks by putting each one on its own individual line instead of one long line where it's hard to follow the path all the way across. This is, yeah. my, this is my tip. <laughs> this is my tip. Once I found out that you can do this, I went and I separated everything out into its own individual lines, and then I could easily see where things go. Yes, I would say that, that that should be first. Um, I don't disagree. Because it's going to go on. I do not priorities. disagree. Yep. But see how easy it was for you to spot that? If that was yeah, one long line of stuff, it's a disaster. So one of the things I was thinking of, of doing someday in my spare time was some kind of a <laughs> redirection, some kind of a redirection manager where you could database all this stuff, right? And it would spit mm -hmm. it out in single lines and then you could you know, easily add things into it. Anyway, just a thought. But I just like the way that this lays out um, so I can see everything that's going on. Yeah, that's that's a, that, is a, that is a good tip, to be fair. that is uh, I do like that, because straight away that stood out, as you say, whereas if it was uh, merged into the line, it wouldn't have stood, you know, you, it wouldn't have caught my eye. So, yeah. Yeah, and you can see the JPEG. That's the first line in the JPEG. Um, I don't, I'm not even yeah. sure why it's, it's that low in the list. Cool. That's Have the I first line in all of them except that. Except, icon. except the, except the uh, icon, <laughs> which is probably the one you use most. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't think I've missed any questions, but uh, Mark has said it uh, looks great, John. So he likes the, uh, the XAML uh, uh, project you just passed through. Thank you. And Andy can distribute that when he's ready, or we can, you know, I might add a few more things to it. I don't know. We'll see. If you want to distribute is that, it, is that distribute okay, it, if... Andy? Oh, yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah, I thought it would be helpful to people um, who want to use animal stuff. So if you want if you want to, you're welcome to. You have my permission to do whatever you want to with it. Brilliant. How's that? How's that? Can I, can I the uh, the painter, can I noyantinize it? You can. <laughs> you, can <laughs> you can literally do anything you want to with that. One, one of you these can, days. You can use my class, everything, just whatever you want to do. One of these days, I, I'm going to request a source code to this, and I'm going to noyantinize it. That's going to be docking pain, so you can be oh, resized yeah, and yeah. so on. I think so we tried to do that once, and the problem I had was it was not. Um, it wouldn't keep it, up with how fast the debugs would come in with the, with the yeah. report control there instead of the list. Well, control. I, that then that's fine. Maybe we don't do that. We we'll still keep it, but the rest of it we can still. Oh yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, yeah just because uh, you you make a good point on that. So let's take that out of the equation in V one, and we'll just do the rest. So so I can you know uh, have the drop downs. You've got drop downs, but you know what I mean. So we can we can fold right. down and resize and, and so on and so forth. Yeah, the resizing on this is terrible. If you move it around, it's gonna it's just terrible. So <laughs> but... so uh, yeah, I I don't mind doing that in the new year. Uh, we'll knock a new version together. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Well, that I kind of starts else. to wrap up. Um, wrap up 2021. <laughs> I mean, I'm back on Wednesday, but that's not the point. <laughs> From a Noyantis point of view, um, for the uh, for a lot, uh, that kind of wraps up. Thank you very much for your uh, your attendance throughout the year, as always, people. Um, much uh, appreciated, and uh, definitely uh, happy Christmas, festive season, holidays, so on and so forth. And all the best for the new year. Keep talking, keep talking. I'm still working on. He's still setting up. <laughs> oh. Um, um, oh, oh, there we go. And you can expect, um, you can expect b before the Wednesday webinar, you will have the DocuSign class, uh, task class, chill cat update out. So you'll have your weather, your currency, your DocuSign, the start of the emails. You'll uh, you'll start to be uh, be able to uh, play with the new toys. Fun times. Oh, All right. I'm ready. Don, Don has a very quick question on live. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Go ahead. I'll Let's open the mic. Key. Might be might be able to just answer it via. Um, uh, Don. Don. Hey, yeah. hey, Andy and John. How are you guys? Yes, yeah, good yourself. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah, when you first started the webinar, you wanted to know uh, the, a good place, a sunny place. I was going to send you my zip code, but it's zero degrees Fahrenheit, So, but it is sunny. 
Let's test. Um, Let's test. Uh, <laughs> quick question of um, <clears throat> I'm you know I'm just getting back into your Noantis uh, stuff, and uh, I want to upgrade my or upgrade my uh, uh, code jock license. And I don't see flowchart when I'm trying to upgrade my license, and I want to buy the suite. Is that the right one to get, or is there more that I don't know about? Oh, so if you want to go to the website, go to Code Jack website, and I'll show you what I'm. Well, while you do that, I'll just uh, I, I will do that. I just want to check. Um, have you? What is it? You say you've already got the suite, or? I got. I I've upgraded your suite this year, a few months ago. And I was just using a test one from Code Jock. And now yep. it's Chris. I always like to buy my stuff in January. So just easy okay, to okay. budget and stuff. Um, so I'd like to upgrade my Code Jock. And I just want to know if I'm getting the right stuff. So if you go to products and then the suite, the com suite, okay. is that, so you, is that, you want yeah. this one? You want yeah. The yeah. Now, if you go to, um, I don't see. I don't see flowchart in there and what you guys are doing, the, uh, the markup. I don't see that. Is that part of that or, or is there okay. extra stuff? Now, that... The markup, uh, I think it, the mark is, markup is included in the bundle overall if it's on the suite. Okay. Um, so that's so, so don't worry about that. That's automatically included. Uh, the flow graph is included in the chart. Okay, that's what I, that, yeah, okay. It yeah. wasn't clear. That's what I thought. So if you click on the bottom where it says Suite Pro, um, a complete ActiveX Suite Pro. That's oh, what I'm. Yeah. That's what I'm. What version have you got one. at the moment? <laughs> you don't oh, want to know. You don't <laughs> want to know. <laughs> <clears throat> Probably one or uh, two. <laughs> okay. So just uh, just one second, Don. I'm just going to check. Uh, just looking on our system to make sure that the photograph is included. It will yes. be included. Yes, in it is. Yes, sweet pro. Yes, cool. yes, it is. You, you and I emailed for that, and we we checked. Yes. Yeah, because it was one of them where um, it wasn't part of the original bundle, and then it got added. But if you bought the bundle, you should get it, and it it, it got missed off. So yeah. Exactly. So well, so if I buy you, this one, if I upgrade this one, it would be great, right? Yeah. Now, what you can do. Um, we don't particularly penalise anybody. We have lots of people who do fall, uh, fall behind, and when they, they catch up, they just apply what we call a lapsed plan rather than an active plan. It's a mm -hmm. tiny bit dearer, but it's it's nothing crazy. You know, you could literally go off two or three years out of date and, and then just catch up in one foul swoop. Um, you just pay a, a small surcharge because of the, the, the time difference. I don't know whether Code Jock do that. So before you go and buy a brand new licence, and don't forget you do get the... Clarion discount code. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I don't want to check out. I'm already yep. signed up to the to the hills. There you go. So before you apply the Clarion discount code, which gets you the 30%, it would be worth uh, speaking to uh, Colleen in sales and okay. just asking, um, you're out of date. Um, what's the best plan going forward? Can they give you any... Uh, discount on a uh, on a lapse renewal will they allow a lapse renewal the worst case scenario is she'll send you down this route of rebuying um, okay. but they've been they have, they have done a few extra um, discounts during COVID and the, these trying times so it's definitely worth an email first or, or a phone call to them first before proceeding with this okay, would you do could you go back one step one page backwards because I click on the other one, I don't really need the maintenance, I don't think. So can you go back one notch? I usually click on the 629 instead. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, I would have done okay. that. Okay. Uh, yeah, so let's take that one off. Yeah, exactly. Clarion okay. in, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so, so, so that's better. Yeah, sorry. Um, okay, because you know, I'll probably be bugging you more than them, so. <laughs> no, that's fine, that's fine. That's, uh, that's what we're in for. We've got no problem with that whatsoever. All right, one more question because it's Christmas time. Um, I'm thinking about upgrading to Chillcat. Can you show me which ones to buy and make sure I go? I purchase the right ones. Do you know? And this is I uh, and everyone knows I'll uh, I'll never make a salesman, but that's fine. I'm happy. Uh, Wendy's not. I mean, she'll never retire. <laughs> but <laughs> um, but yes, basically we we're running uh, we're running a discount uh, for uh, from last Friday till the end of December. Mm -hmm. um, and the discount code is Xmas 2021, XMAS 2021. 
Um, on our, our uh, so if you wanted to the chill cap wrapper, now's the time to get it because you get fifteen percent off. Yeah. Um, so so yeah, but if you go to chill cap, yeah, um, I'm there now. Yep. Brilliant. I want to know which one I need. Yeah. Well, here's the thing with them. Now, if you do products, where are you? You do buy. Yeah, that's yep. an easier one. When you buy it, you're getting the lot. You're getting the iOS library, the ActiveX, the C, the, 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 the Android. You're getting everything. So there is only one product to buy. So, okay. So it's one product developer. That's the one to get, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I don't know if you saw Friday's webinar, but I am quite the fan. Yes. Yes, I did. I listened to it. Uh, I liked it. Yes. It, it is quite the uh, the tool. And I am blatantly being biased. Uh, I use... I'm not protective of anything like, like like that. I'm a big believer in the best tool for the job. And mm -hmm. I have a I, I have a lot of third parties myself because you just choose the best tool for the job. FM3, I mean, God, I go back to FM2. I'm not even sure I go back to FM originally. Um, so I, 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 I couldn't live without it. It goes into staple diet of any of our um, of our product, uh, projects, definitely. And there's a whole host of others. And NetTalk web server automatically you know, that's a, a default choice for any kind of web server I'm doing and so on and so forth. I could technically, well, actually, no, I couldn't. I was going to say, I could take the time to take time uh, take time out and write the whole web server with the chill cat stuff. It's got all the power in it to do it, but I'm not going to do that. Why reinvent a really good wheel what's already out there? It, it, so, exactly, yeah. Nick so talks about so much support that you, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. so, 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 um, so although we do kind of clash on, not clash, compete, that's a much better uh, word, uh, we do compete on certain products uh, yep. and so on. Uh, there's definitely no animosity and so on and so forth. But when it comes to the communications library, I have got a lot of years experience and the chill cat is pretty, pretty strong. And I mean, like really strong. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other thing I liked about it, it had the SFTP, which NetTalk don't okay. have. So yeah, there's a few things in there. Honestly, that... yeah, no, I, I wouldn't know that. It's, I've got NetTalk. I, I use it for all our servers, so on and so forth, but I only use it for the server stuff. The rest of it, mm -hmm. I, I'm more comfortable yep. in my own. I choose, again, come back to that best tool for the job uh, and what you're comfortable with. The web stuff, automatic choice. For the other stuff, my stuff, because it's the automatic choice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. For no, you guys, no. the task classes are going to be the key. Um, but as I demonstrated, you know, taking a curl, command in um, it's just going to be so easy for you to trans transfer that code into your own as well and yeah. we are here every week you know okay i said i'm not going there's not going to be one over to no one between the christmas and new year john is there an open webinar between christmas and new year between so christmas be, and new year um i don't see why not that would be the 29th yeah, exactly. you see, if I'm, I'm going to have a look if it's on, if it's on, I'm going to be there because all I'm going to be doing is just sat on my sofa uh, watching yet another Christmas movie. So I'm going to probably join in on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't. I, we haven't cancelled that one, so yeah. Yeah, so so I uh, I shall attend that one. Yeah, it'd be good. It's just you can all watch a Christmas movie. We've been watching loads actually. If you want the truth, we've watched more this year than I think ever before, uh, <laughs> and why and why not? I mean, the UK is going to be going into another lockdown any day now, so I might as well get them all set up. <laughs> <laughs> Watch The Bishop's Wife. That's one of my favorites. I've never heard of that. The Bishop's Wife. The Bishop's Wife. It's actually... John, it's, this, is, this a, isn't one of them dodgy films, is it, John? No, it's not a dodgy <laughs> film. <laughs> no, 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 no. But in fact, there's been multiple... Uh, you know the original then there's been a, at least one remake i know of maybe more okay well i shall uh, i shall do that i have one guilty uh, thing of every watch christmas. the old one i have to watch uh, every christmas uh without fail i have to watch uh, muppets christmas carol oh well, that's a good one yeah i'm <laughs> with you on uh, that that's a classic for me that um but yeah sorry don to go back to that um as i say that's the product you want and that that gets you is everything so when you i think yeah, there's a whole host of, uh, they used to split them into separate files, but now they're all one. But basically, you're covered for everything in, in the one license. Okay. And then on ours, uh, it's, um, there's that discount, XMASXMAS2021. Uh, Any yeah. problems, just fire me an email. Yeah, I will. All right. Well, anyways, thanks, you guys. Thank you and John and for doing this, and Merry Christmas. Cool.
Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. And go watch The Bishop's Wife. <laughs> I've just wrote it down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna did you? in a minute. I did, yeah, definitely. It's there. Yeah, one I prepared earlier. Oh, you can't see. No, with, oh. But it's there. <laughs> it's got Cary Grant in it. I mean, you can't go wrong. Oh, right. It's an old one, then. Oh, it's an old one. Yeah, it's an old one. But it's good. Just it's telling okay. you. I, I still watch A Wonderful Life as well, so. There you go. 1947. Old. Oh, that, Wendy won't watch that. That's, that's one for me on my own. <laughs> okay, watch it by yourself. Yeah. Cool. Okie dokie. Right, let's wrap up. Um, thank you, everybody, once again. And uh, I shall see you Wednesday anyway. Oh, am I supposed to? Okay, now I got to team. Now we're back. Good. Now we're good. Sorry, D- right. blame bl- blame me for not covering stuff earlier. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, we're set. Um, yeah, happy holidays and Merry Christmas. Oh wait, wait, oh, you already did that one. Okay, sorry, did that, did that. All right, no more questions. You're right. Um, that's it. See you guys oh. Wednesday or whoever. Yeah, see you Wednesday. Otherwise, yeah, later. Bye. Bye. Say goodbye, Andy. (laughs) Goodbye, Andy. See, I didn't let you get away with that. (laughs) 